Hello everybody. How are you all doing today? I hope you're all well. It's a dreary, miserable, grey, wet day here in London as we gallop towards the end of 2017. My goodness, where has that time gone? It's been pretty grotty every day since Christmas down here, so it's actually been the perfect time to just hunker down and have some lovely, really quiet time to just reflect on this whole year and dream about next year. I can't wait already. And I was thinking, you know, this year, wow, firstly, it's gone really quickly. <clears throat> I honestly, I, I, it, it feels like the summer was yesterday in some, uh, in some respects. But thinking about the year as a whole, going all the way back to last January, um, wow, <laughs> it's been a massive, massive year of change for me, and I couldn't be happier. You know, if you think about it, this year I left my job, I left a long-term relationship, I left a lot of sort of general chaos and negativity behind, I, I didn't know this year was going to pan out this way. If if I'd have sat here a year ago, there's no way I would have been dreaming that any of this would have happened. The, the leaving of the job, in a way, it sort of prompted everything else. So the year I've been having is the year I've been dreaming of for ages. But in some ways, I was never quite brave enough to do, or never quite confident enough, and um, just always seemed like an impossible dream. And it also seemed like a dream that I wouldn't be able to do in London, that I would have to do it in the countryside. But I'm doing it, I'm living it, and um, I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever. It was sad to leave work and, you know, I left much sooner than I anticipated purely because of my knees and the fact that it was getting to the stage where I was just in agony every single shift I worked and, and pain is incredibly distracting and it's so hard in, in a highly high dependency unit <clears throat> working with the kind of children I did to, you know, it's you have to be a hundred percent on the ball all the time with these very very sick children so to have this constant distraction of the pain it was just no good so obviously you know having spoken to consultants early in the year it became apparent that yeah i was going to have to leave my job <clears throat> and that put this massive ball in motion well i say massive ball in some ways it's like a small ball if that makes sense. I've gone from having a big ball in motion that was my life before to now having a really small ball in lotion. Lotion? Motion. This is only tea, I promise you. Um, my, my dream had always been that I wanted to live a life that was more sustainable, more self-reliant and basically more simple. Just focusing on my, what are my immediate needs? Food in my belly, a roof over my head, love in my heart, that's my friends. Anything beyond that is, or would be, an extra. So I think the biggest thing I've learned this year is, yes, I can do it. And I, I'm kind of kicking myself in some ways that I didn't do it sooner, that I wasn't braver sooner. But on the other hand, the only reason I can do this now is through having worked for all those years and put every single penny into the bank to pay off the mortgage, to pay off student debts, all of that sort of thing. To put myself in a position where I can live without wage. And I'm amazed I'm doing it and I'm really, really happy. I have to say I'm probably working harder now, working more hours now than I ever have done. Um, 
but it's my work and so much of it is outside and that's the big thing for me I love 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 to be outside I just want to be outside all the time I've definitely realized that um, <clears throat> I do need to how to push it not have an income as such but I do need to be able to generate money from time to time if I had more land if I had way more land I could produce excess vegetables and I could use those to trade with but I haven't I've got my hundred square meters and that's it and that just about feeds me there's nothing spare so again just sort of reflecting these last few days and going forward I'm dead excited for next year I'm hoping to make my little garden even more productive by jiggling things around a little bit but using my non-garden time to focus on making things which I can sell <coughs> excuse me so over the next couple of months while it's still dark and dreary and wintry and I'm stuck indoors that's the plan is to get on with my sewing projects so I can generate a bit of income because there have been a couple of times this year when I've had to do a couple of maintenance jobs on the building so I've had to dip into savings now if any of you kind of join the story way back in March you'll know I do have a pot of savings the idea is that they're there for emergencies not for me to live on so I've had a couple of things go wrong with the building which I've had to fix and hopefully those fixes will last for years and years and years to come so um, I don't foresee any other major things going wrong with the house. I hope not anyway. Um, so yeah, I feel in a good position to move forward for next year. I'm so excited about it. My one slight concern obviously is my own health, which actually that's another big thing to come to terms with this year, as well as leaving work, leaving behind my wage, leaving that relationship. I kind of feel like I've lost some of my health in the last couple of years, um, at least my sort of fitness and strength, which is a little bit scary because obviously I'm having to rely on myself to do any work. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that over the next couple of months, my knee continues to heal and gets better and better and better. At some point I can have the other knee seen to, maybe next winter, um, so that when it comes to sort of the end of March, when it's really full steam ahead in the garden, getting all that green manure turned in, preparing all the beds for the new seeds, hopefully by then I will be fit enough to do the work. I hope so. Um, I haven't really made a contingency plan if I can't. I think, look, I'll just adapt. That's that's another big thing I've learned this year is you just adapt so this year I found that instead of sitting on the soil cross-legged which I always used to like to do that hurts too much now I have to sit with my legs straight out and I bought that granny stool to perch on and I bought my granny trolley to wheel behind me they were another two purchases I could have done without but it's about being sensible otherwise in terms of money I you know I really I really haven't had to spend. This last month I've spent a bit more um, purely because I laid in a load of extra bits and pieces for post-surgery in case I wasn't up to cooking. Turns out I needn't have done but that's okay because all that stuff I bought it's kind of they've got long shelf life they can go in the pantry and then every now and again <clears throat> you know if I'm if I don't feel up to cooking or if some food runs out I'll have that there for keeps a couple of little treats over Christmas my bottle of bubbles what have you but in fairness you know it's not you know it's not a huge amount to spend is it so I think money wise I'm amazed at how well I've done I've got quite a few items of clothing which are really getting very very threadbare uh, now I always repair my clothes if I get a hole I always darn my socks but there comes a point when you can't fix and you can't darn anymore. 
so I will have to spend a bit of money buying some fabric and get back into making my own clothes, which I haven't done for years. I actually can't remember the last time I made any of my own clothes. It's probably 10 years or more ago, but that'll be great. So um, yeah, go on a little fabric hunting expedition for some clothes for me and then make the time to make them. I'm hoping actually this year in terms of time that I will have more time. Because if you think back to, basically it was June, July and August, over the course of those three months, I was doing sort of four, five days a week with my great aunt, with that hideous six hour commute every day that nearly killed me. And now that she's much more sort of set up and established, I'm only visiting her once a week now. So for the other six days of the week, if I think in terms of three hard days in the garden and then three days for sewing, maintenance, preserving food, all of that sort of thing. Hopefully I should get it more in balance. Oh, and time obviously to see friends and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think on the whole this year's been good. I've learned I've learnt a lot of lessons. I've learnt that I am probably more resilient than I realised. So there have been quite a few things that have come along it's sort of on a more personal level, which have really impacted on me. Um, there have been some really, really negative moments, but I've managed to kind of work my way through them, problem solve, get to the other side. The garden has been the most wonderful constant in everything. So when I've gone through some troubling times, just getting to the garden, working hard, I love to work hard, working hard just, it kind of takes everything else away and I feel so satisfied by the end of it. But just having that kind of quiet space to be in, to sort of reflect and, and think things through. So I'll say that it hasn't by any means been all roses this year. And I don't look back on the year with rose tinted specs, not by any means. But it has been fantastic. I've learnt so much more about my garden and what it can give me. I've learnt so much more about myself. I really learned, or I'm in the process of learning to let negative stuff go. You know, that old phrase of don't sweat the small stuff. I'm really trying to do that. My life has become more and more simple which is wonderful to just be able to focus on the really good stuff, the beautiful veg, the homemade food, friendships, friendships that are meaningful and rewarding. My relationship with you guys through the medium of the World Wide Web. Yeah, it's been a, a pretty good year and I think next year is going to be even better. Put it this way, I feel more prepared for it. I feel more, I don't know what the word is, I was almost going to say I feel like I've kind of developed this little suit of armour to get through life in but that sounds like I've put a shell around myself and I don't mean it that way, I just mean that through the various ups and downs of the last few years and especially this year since I've been living without a wage, I have got a few more tough bits, if you like, to help me through inevitable rubbish times that will come, because they do, but I feel like I'll cope with things better. Yay! So, there's not much more to say apart from goodbye 2017, hello 2018. I don't make New Year's resolutions as such. I it's more that I try to reflect on the previous year and think about what didn't I like and what can I do differently to make sure I don't have the things I don't like in my life. So that's what I'll be thinking about over the next 24 hours as the clock ticks round. And I was going to say I'm Big Ben chimes, but of course he's not going to chime this year, is he? Because he's having a few repairs. So I'm going to leave you all to have a little reflect on your year. Dream big for next year. Oh, just dream big. My big dream would be, I'm going to start waffling now, but here we go. My big dream would be to trans, transport my house somehow into the countryside and to have my 
garden alongside it and wouldn't that look different that would then suddenly it would be like oh yeah she's living off the land self-sufficiently a friend pointed this out to me recently and it's that thing of because I live in London it doesn't seem that that's what I'm doing because I live in London but it kind of is what I'm doing so in my mind's eye <laughs> surrounded by countryside but who knows Maybe 2018 will be the year when I start to look further afield and start to um, scout out a possible somewhere else to live. I don't know. I don't think that will happen realistically for another sort of five or ten years because I do love it here and I love my community. But that's my big dream. So how can I make my big dream work where I am? So that's what I'll be thinking about over the next 24 hours, my big dreams for 2018 and how can I make them come true. So I hope you've got big dreams too and I hope you're working on a plan to um, start to make them come true. But in the meantime, I will say cheerio to you, cheerio to 2017 and I'll leave you with these lovely images of some of my favourite moments from this year. Have a great New Year's everyone and happy 2018! Oh, my glasses are staying up. <laughs>